This lecture is titled Dry Principle. A substantial number of bugs in software are caused by repetitive code. If you have 10 functions which do the same and you need to change the behavior of such a function, you'll have to modify all 10 functions. So, the definition of the dry principle was formulated in the famous book The Pragmatic Programmer by Andy Hunt and Dave Thomas, and it sounds like this. Every piece of knowledge must have a single, unambiguous representation in the system. This principle concerns all the different aspects of software. It can be applied to any programming code or database schemas or anything else including documentation. The most common ways of violating the dry principle are the following. Magic strings or any other magic values, duplicate logic in multiple locations, and repeated if-then logic or multiple switch cases scattered throughout the code base. Let's look at examples. Look at this example. Here we get the response from a device. Then we compare the result with 188. Such magic values tend to spread over a class which interoperates with a device. This is how duplication appears. Aside of that duplication, who knows what 188 means? To understand the meaning of that code, we need to read the documentation. Wouldn't it be nice to define a constant with a meaningful name? This constant can now be used everywhere we need. It is now clear what 188 means. It means that there is no connection with the device. Here is another example. The similar situation. Here we see that magic values started to spread. Aside from the fact that it is absolutely impossible to understand what's going on here. And the duplication may lead to unfortunate consequences. For example, if one of the duplicated values is going to be changed, then you are going to change that values everywhere it was used. To fix the problem, we can apply the same technique defining constant values that become the single sources of change. I defined constant values only for duplicated values, but most likely I would do the same for all the other values. Now it's apparent that commands at first initialize a device, then send a command and after that close that device. Here's the same example. What's wrong here? We fixed the duplicated magic numbers. But what can be enhanced in addition? We have the duplicated logic here. And it is not to speak that there can appear 10 new methods with the same pattern of send commands. Look how we can refactor this code. I extracted a method which removes the duplicated logic by taking the responsibility of wrapping actual commands by initialization and termination. The benefits might be not obvious, but in case of more than three methods, benefits would become obvious. This is a simple example of duplicated logic. There is much more interesting case related to duplicated logic. The question is. Is that true that duplicate logic is always a bad thing? And the answer is quite interesting. Imagine that you develop three applications which belong to the same domain. Logically, such applications would have significant similarities in the functionality they implement. This fact logically leads to a natural desire to create a shared library which contains pieces of functionality that is the same for all the three applications. As you remember, every piece of knowledge must have a single unambiguous representation in the system. So if you implement the same functionality thrice, once for each application, then seemingly you violate the dry principle, yep? Now let's consider the following case from my practice. We had three applications which shared the logic of the following function. Here we have a class with three properties and the function which checks if the card is valid. For some time, this function worked well for all the three applications. But one day, one of the applications changed the requirements. It required to check first name and last name as well. Implementing another function for that particular application would be considered a violation of the dry principle, so a decision to introduce a boolean flag was made. 
And here is the second version of the same function. Cool! We preserved the ability to use the same function all over the code base. Peace has settled down and we continued our work. For some time everything was okay, until one day when boss said that there is another requirement from the third application. The third application now can allow IDs to be longer than 10 characters. To preserve the ability to use the same function all over the code base, we introduced a new boolean flag. Here is how the new version of the function looked like. Yeah, yeah, I know, this function turned into a real mess. And this is only the beginning. If you start to apply solid principles and all the best practices to avoid this mess, you'll often end up with a separate implementation for each application. Often, not always, but often, it's better not to share logic between applications. It's better to grow that logic separately, at least until you get absolutely sure that you can merge the same implementations. Indeed, there are cases when we are 100% sure that particular business logic will never change or the probability of changes is extremely low. If semantic is different, don't merge the code which looks like duplicated code. Let's look at another case when duplication is actually not a duplication at all. Here is an example. By the way, this example is also from my own practice. Classes are just named differently. Here we have two classes which represent different devices. Both of them have the same data properties. A junior developer from our team decided that this clearly violates the dry principle, so he decided to extract the same data properties into a base class. He came out with the following refactored version of this code. Here is the device class which contains the duplicated properties. Now all the devices will inherit from that class and the dry principle is met. Unfortunately, that was a bad decision and there are several reasons. The first reason is that it's hard to believe that all the devices will share the same properties. I'm pretty sure that LSP is violated by this refactoring. The second reason is that now we have a strong coupling between base class and inheritors, and actually I don't see where are the benefits of such inheritance. Frankly, it's a very rare case when inheritance of data is a good idea. You know, all languages, objects are comprised of public functions, and the data should be hidden. The third reason is that the first intention was wrong. There was no any duplication. The fact that two objects have the same data properties doesn't make them similar. What makes the object similar is their behavior. So there is no need to couple objects which have different semantic. Vladimir Horikov even came out with the notion of utility inheritance. Vladimir Horikov, the reviewer of this video course, even came out with the notion of utility inheritance. This example demonstrates exactly that evil technique. On the slide. You can see the reference to the blog post about utility inheritance. Take a look at this code. Here we have an enumeration of shapes and the visualizer class, which defines two operations. There are only two operations just for the sake of simplicity. In the real world scenario, there would be many classes, which use that enumerations and dozens of methods filled by switch cases. Switch cases on the same enumeration, which are scattered all over the code base, is one of the worst nightmares you may see in your life. When some kind of the behavior aspect changes regarding one of the enumeration values, you have to find all the places in the system where switch cases are implemented and change the corresponding chunks of code. If you add a shape, you have to find all the places with switch cases and modify them, adding cases for that new shape. This is a true evil duplication. How to fix the problem? The open close principle is the answer. You can define a base class and turn the enumeration values into inheritors represented by classes. If something changes, you have a single place where you need to make that change. Now, the client code can just rely on the base shape class. No switch cases scattered all over the code base. Remember that repetition in logic calls for abstraction. Great! In the next lecture we will study the KISS principle.